Representative Gary. Like. It is hard to sneak up on folks. <laughs> Northwest Ohio is God's country, amen? Yeah. And it's also GOP country. Yeah. Come on, folks, we can do I know you're tired. I'm the last speaker, so you can cheer. No one else you got to cheer for tonight. This is GOP country. This is God's country. You know, I, I do a little bit on Twitter, and I don't do a lot, but I, I took that picture. It's just being in the right place at the right time, and the Democrats were back there holding up their signs. You know, we're fascists. The Republicans are fascists. They're going to send us all to hell and whatever, you know. And they were up there doing their little chant. And I just got my camera, and I just did like this, and I clicked it. I'm lucky if I get like four or five people to view something I do on Twitter. That has been seen 46,000 times. <laughs> One of the reporters made a comment. She said, and he's a pastor. <laughs> I said, and? Did you ever see how Jesus treated the Pharisees and the hypocrites? <laughs> Come on now. It's okay to, to have it to mock them when they act silly once in a while. Listen, I, I, I've been told I got five minutes, and so my first five, I'm going to say this. <laughs> Safe Act is something that... Uh, uh, Craig was working with me on a little bit last General Assembly. I love Craig. He's been a mentor to me in the house. We miss you so much. But, but the SAFE Act, Saving Adolescents from Experimentation. Uh, Senator Ryan, uh, Senator Gavron, we're going to send it to you soon. Because these kids, there are people out there today who think it's normal to give sex changes to children. That is not normal. Listen, people on, on Twitter have been telling me lately, they said, it's no different than getting surgery for a cleft palate or getting no surgery. Listen, I had no surgery when I was a child, but I'm still a man. <laughs> Didn't change anything, I promise you. And we have had Sponsor testimony, we've had proponent testimony, knocked it out of the park both times, because it makes sense. It, this is just common sense. And they call me the extremist, because I don't want to cut off healthy body parts. On Wednesday, they're going to be coming in, the opponents are going to come in, the hospitals are going to come in, and they're going to tell you how it's based on the best science. Really? How many of y'all believe that's based on the best science? You think that's normal? No. Let me tell you what happens. People who go through these sex chain surgeries are 19 times more likely to take their own lives. These kids end up with osteopenia, osteoporosis. They end up with greater risk for uh, diabetes, heart attacks, and strokes. We are killing our kids through this. If they can't kill them through abortion, they'll kill them through this. I'm not going to stand up for it, are you? Listen, I'm there to fight the battle. I get yelled at, screamed at, hollered at, beat up, cussed at, spit at. I don't care because I'm going to do the right thing. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. Are you all with me? Yep. I'll put these on your table. And there's been a theme tonight. Everyone has said it. You know, DJ called me earlier. Where are you, DJ? Did you? There he is. We, we talked about this earlier today. Uh, Senator Gavarone mentioned it. Thank you, Senator Gavarone. I appreciate you and love you so much. And, and this has been the theme tonight. This is going to be all about turnout. Do you realize we, we have the greatest state? We are the heart of it all, but we have the weakest protections for our Constitution of any state in the nation. Did you know that? That's the truth. You realize only 18 states will allow you to amend uh, citizens to amend and to change the Constitution. Only 18 states allow you to do that. We're one of those. Of those 18 states, there are varying degrees of requirements. Only eight of those states, and we are one of them, says you can change your most fundamental document with 50% plus one vote. Now that means we can radically alter our Constitution. Not just the law, the Constitution. By one vote. 
plus one vote. The Democrats are starting to figure this out. And that's why they have, as you know, Senator Gavarone so eloquently mentioned, I mean, they've actually got addresses where the casinos have to be. They've created a monopoly for the, the casinos. They've created a monopoly for the marijuana industry. Can I just tell you something? They don't have to be honest with you when they put it on the ballot, when they spend out-of-state interest, spends millions and millions of dollars to tell you, vote yes on this or vote no on that. They don't have to be honest. And the difference between, the, I asked people, they, they came in and, and they lobbied in my office. They said, I said, do you know what, what's the difference between the Ohio Revised Code and the Constitution? They went, uh, we don't know. I said, well, let me tell you. And I said, here's how long it's made, just like the SAFE Act or any other bill that, that Senator Garron, Senator Reinecke, uh, Representative Swearingen and myself, we put out there. We get an idea. We go give testimony out. We get all the hard questions and testimony, you know. Uh, Representative swearingen has got a great bill. I think it's uh, House Bill 8. Is that the right number? Pence Bill of Rights. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause for that. <laughs> some of us saw some things in there. We're like, well, we don't know about that. You know, it's we asking the tough questions. And, and he says, you know what, Gary? That's, that's a good question. If we can fix that and we change it. So we amend the bills. It happens to all of us. And then... We go through that process and that amendment process, and then we get it to the House floor, and we pass it off the House floor. Then it goes over to our colleagues in the Senate. And they do it all over again, and you get interested parties come in and tell you, well, hey, what about this? Maybe you didn't think about this, and you didn't think about that, and it gets filtered, and it gets vetted, and it gets filtered, and it gets vetted before it goes through both chambers and to the governor for a signature. And if you get something wrong, like there's a couple things that we go back and amend once in a while. We go back and say, hey, this happened a couple years ago, we didn't think about the consequences. Let's go in and fix it. We can go in and fix it easy. You realize it's not that easy to do when it's in the Constitution. The Constitution is not supposed to be a malleable document. That's our core principles. But the Democrats have found out you can. So let me tell you what they're doing. On November, they are working to put something on the ballot to kill babies. That's right. I had a guy come up and approach me. In fact, I videotaped it. His name was Marco. He's from Michigan. And he was in Fremont collecting signatures for reproductive rights. And I said, well, explain this to me. I already knew what it said. He said, it's neither for nor against abortion. He was lying. It is for abortion. It is to kill babies. Now, listen, I know there's some room for some disagreement on some things. And I know that you know, some people are, you know, no abortion, no matter what, no exceptions, pro-life, 100%. Good for you. Uh, I know some people say, well, I make an exception for the life of the mother. That's where I fall in. There are some people who say, well, I make exceptions for rape and incest. You know, and those are great conversations to have, by the way. It's okay to have those conversations. But what's in this bill is absolute 100% regulation-free abortion. You realize there's no age limit. I asked him, so, so this uh, it says an individual. It doesn't say how old you have to be. He goes, no, that's right. I said, so you mean uh, a teenage girl can go get an abortion without her parents? He said, yeah, that's her right. I said, so what about if, if a coach or an adult or a family member gets her pregnant, he can take her and get her an abortion without telling mom and dad? He said, that's right. I don't believe in that, do you? I don't believe in that at all. Unregulated. Parents don't have to know. All the way up until birth. They put some language in there that says, well, you can regulate it. But if the doctor thinks better, then he can over, override those regulations. And by the way, it talks about, it says it's not limited to abortion. It says reproductive rights. You know what that means? One of the biggest arguments against on the SAFE Act is, listen, you are sterilizing kids. 12 years old, 8 years old. I just shared an article not, not long ago. So they talked to an 8-year-old girl who thinks she's a boy. and says, okay, do you want to freeze your eggs so you can maybe have kids? What's an 8-year-old girl know about that? And so, this, so what this, some attorneys are telling us, is that this means, and by the way, Planned Parenthood will give out free puberty blockers and opposite sex hormones to adults. This passes, they'll be passing them out to kids like candy. So they figured that out. They're getting that on the November ballot. On August the 8th, we have issue one, which is going to protect our Constitution. It's going to say, we believe in our Constitution. It should not be changed so frivolously. And we're going to try to raise the bar to 60% to change our Constitution. 
We want to get ahead of them because they also want to do things like raise minimum wage. What do you think is going to happen when this country finds out, or at least when Ohio figures out, hey, you know, 50% plus one, we can raise our wages. Forget $15 an hour minimum wage, you business owners. We're going to go up to 25, 35, 40. You think that's going to be great for our economy? How many of you believe in the Second Amendment? I'm practicing my Second Amendment rights right now. But you know what? When they figure out, hey, it only takes 50% plus one, they can go after your Second Amendment rights. Do you want that? No. So what we've got to do is protect the Constitution. That's why I went to the trouble to print these out and get these on your table. And so we're protecting Ohio's Constitution. What you have to do is to vote yes on August 8th. Typically, August elections are very low turnout. This one's going to be different. They, on the opposite side, they are pulling out all of the stops, I promise you. This is going to be a record August election. I promise, I promise, I promise. And it's going to be a battle for turnout. Either we're going to turn out or they're going to turn out. Whoever turns out wins. Whoever shows up wins. If you don't show up, you just forfeited the game. So what I want all of you to do is make sure you're registered to vote. I think in a crowd like this, almost everyone's probably registered to vote. Get your friends. Register your friends to vote. Tell them what's going on. Get out there and, and let's bank our votes. I know as Republicans, we like to vote same day. I love to vote same day. How many same day voters are, are there in here? I, I'm one of them. But on this issue, I'm going to ask you to do something because it's going to help us. You can start voting on July the 11th. Bank those votes. The reason that it's important to bank those votes because there's going to be people out there, poll flushers, who are going to be looking out who hasn't voted, and they're going to be targeting the people who haven't voted. You're going to make it easier on us to target the people who have not yet voted if you go vote. We can concentrate in those other areas. So let's get the word out. It's up to us to get the word out. Every one of our chairmen, and thank you, chairman, for putting this together. Uh, Justin, Jill, and Chris, you did a fantastic job. Thank you, Frank, for putting this all together. You did amazing. But how many of you got a cell phone? Grab your cell phones right now if you got a cell phone. Grab your cell phone. All right, here's what I'm going to ask you to do, and then I'm done. we got to get the word out. I forgot a cell phone. I don't remember what pocket I put it in. There it is. So I want you to hold this card up. It says, vote yes. I want you to take a selfie. Take a selfie with it. Go ahead and do it right now. Take a selfie of you and your vote yes card. And then I want you to flip it over and take a selfie that says protect Ohio's constitution. Okay? Do that. Now, once you've done that, I want you to post that to Facebook. Okay? Now, when you take your picture, don't cover up when it says early voting begins July 11th. Now, you can cover up the Gary Click part if you want to, but I'd love it if you didn't. Yeah. But if you don't like me, you go ahead and cover that part up. That's okay. Not everyone's a fan. And post that. And I want you to post something once a week on your Facebook. Let people know. Let your friends. You know, most people are influenced by the people that they trust. And if they trust you, you know, post it. Now, if you post this and you tag me in it, I will share it. So post it on Facebook, tag Gary Click. I'll share it. We'll get it out there again. And we'll just keep sharing it. And when you find that one of your friends who posted it, you share theirs. Just keep sharing it and sharing it. What we've got to do is create awareness. And when people see all over Facebook, this group, about 500 people. You know, if y'all post that tonight, there's going to be 500 messages go out to however many friends you've got. That's thousands. You can't buy that. You can't buy that. So do that tonight. Do it again. Tomorrow, do it again next week. Do it as many times. Oh, Mirchage even has me in the picture. People, that might hurt. <laughs> but let people know. Let's get the word out. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you all. I love you and I appreciate you.